Hi, I'm Jessica from Garmin, and today I'm going to take you flying in a Bonanza equipped with Smart Glide, a new technology that, in the event of an emergency or an engine failure, Smart Glide can help pilots more efficiently navigate to an airport within glide range. And with a compatible autopilot, Smart Glide can even fly the aircraft, allowing the pilot to focus on the emergency at hand. As part of this flight, I will demo three different Smart Glide activation scenarios. In this installation, the Smart Glide can be activated two different ways via a dedicated Smart Glide button installed in the panel and through a new emergency menu button, both either on the TXI flight display or the GTN XI touchscreen navigator. For installations without a dedicated Smart Glide button in the panel, pilots can press and hold the Direct 2 button on the GTNXI to also activate Smart Glide. Factors considered during a Smart Glide activation include the airport classification, where public and military airports have priority over private airports, the runway length and condition as well as the estimated remaining altitude upon arrival over at the airport in AGL, terrain, as well as the weather at the destination airport and whether or not it's reporting VFR, marginal VFR, or IFR conditions. And that's with a compatible weather source, such as FISB weather, Sirius XM aviation weather, or Iridium data link weather. For our initial activation, I'm going to select the Smart Glide button installed in the panel. Smart Glide active. And Airport, 12 o'clock, four and a half miles. And immediately we get the oral enunciation that Smart Glide has been activated. Also, you'll note that the autopilot automatically engaged and pitched for best glide speed, which is 110 knots in this airplane. You'll notice in a dual GTN XI installation, we also have a new page automatically populate, which is a Smart Glide emergency page. From the Smart Glide emergency page, we can select Cancel Glide, or if we had alternate airports within our range, we could also select a different airport if we didn't like the initial airport that Smart Glide selected. I will note that you can select Cancel Glide on this page at any time, as well as on the TXI flight display. We can also disengage the autopilot at any time, so the pilot always remains in the loop. You'll also notice that as part of this activation, it's automatically loaded Miami County, or K81's, CTAF in standby in COM1 for us. Maneuver and land. Airport, 12 o'clock, 2 miles. At two nautical miles, we get the maneuver and land enunciation, which is an indication to us that we need to disconnect, disconnect autopilot, disconnect the autopilot, maneuver and land, and set up for our landing at this particular airport. Also, as part of a Smart Glide activation, is the estimated arrival uh, altitude in AGL over the airport. And what this means is it roughly estimates how high above the airport we will be when we cross over the center of it, which can help us more efficiently plan maybe our downwind base and final entry into the pattern, or perhaps maybe just a straight into the runway on final. Another helpful feature of Smart Glide is that with the autopilot connected, it really affords the pilot the opportunity to go through a very quick memory flow of the emergency items. So for example, in the Bonanza, we can check the fuel selector valve, mags on both, fuel pump, mixture rich, and then if we have time, we can pull out the paper checklist to verify we've hit all of those items, all while the autopilot remains fully coupled and navigating to the airport that Smart Glide has selected. As part of the second activation scenario, I'm going to activate Smart Glide without an airport in range and highlight some of its features. Go ahead and activate Smart Glide. Smart Glide active. No airports within glide range. 
So immediately we receive the no airport within glide range oral enunciation. So we know right out of the gate that there are no airports within glide range of our current position. Even though there are no airports within range, the autopilot still engages and flies straight ahead, straight and level, and still pitches for best glide speed. And because there are no airports within range, instead of tuning a CTAF or tower frequency in standby, it automatically attunes emergency frequency of 121.5 in standby for us. One feature I really like about this activation scenario is that the autopilot's still engaged, and it really allows us to get outside of the cockpit and maybe look for the most suitable field or road that we can land on. And in doing so, we can still engage the autopilot in heading mode to perhaps maybe drive over to a particular area or a field that we see looks to be the best for our off-airport landing. And again, we're at 4,100 feet, so we still have plenty of time to run through our memory items checklist within the Bonanza, perhaps pull out the checklist, and the autopilot remains fully engaged, pitching for best glide for us. 2,000. Also unique to an activation when there are no airports within range is pilots receive a 2,000-foot, 1,000-foot, and 500-foot AGL callout which can be particularly helpful in unfamiliar environments or terrain. For our third and final activation today, I'm going to demonstrate activating Smart Glide without an airport within range, and then an airport comes within range, and showing how we can command Smart Glide to navigate to that airport. Smart Glide active. Engaging autopilot. No airports within glide range. So initially, there are no airports within range. But we can see on the moving map here that Miami County is slowly starting to come within range. And we can also check the alternate airports list, which also shows us that Miami County is within our glide range now. So as we get within glide range, we can either select the airport from the alternate airports menu or via the moving map. We're seven four Charlie, uh, turn uh, right, no delay on Alpha, and then taxi to the range. Airport, 11 o'clock, four miles. So now we've told Smart Glide that we're manually navigating to Miami County. And we can even look at our estimated arrival AGL flag, which is 600 feet. Maneuver and land. Airport, 12 o'clock, two miles. So now that we've manually t selected K81, it's navigating to that airport. Disconnect. Autopilot. And as we near it, it's telling us to disconnect the autopilot within two nautical miles. And I do want to reiterate that at any moment, we can cancel the glide via the dedicated cancel glide button on the emergency page or even on the TXI flight display. And of course, I can disconnect the autopilot, maneuver and land at uh, Miami County. In experimental aircraft, Smart Glide requires a G3X touch flight display. In certified aircraft, Smart Glide requires a GTNXI touchscreen navigator and a compatible flight display such as TXI or a GIG75. To learn more about Smart Glide, visit garmin.com/smartglide.